about this game? How do you like the game so far? Uh, you know, I'm I'm excited. You know, I'm excited with how the how everybody's doing. I'm proud of the guys out here. You know, representing our people. And uh, you know, it's still early in the game, so uh, we'll see how it goes. athlete is is people's just now starting to figure out that uh, there's a big Polynesian community obviously out here there's a hotbed and when I was in Texas I was in Houston and Euless Trinity you know the Tongan uh, the Tongan community um, huge huge and then when I went to uh, Texas Southern down in Houston I came back here and recruited um, uh, shoot out of uh, Long Beach Poly um, buddy to a Masaga and um, Alex Sagale. So I, 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 you know, we didn't know a lot about the Polynesian athlete in uh, Houston. And so what I want to do is bring some cats out that way and show them how they, how they operate and what they do. Cause they're, they're great, great, great young men. And that want an opportunity to play and deserve an opportunity to play, but not a lot of people are getting a Pago Pago, right? Or American Samoa to go recruit. Very few programs can do that. And then very few programs are getting to where the hotbeds of the, the community is. So these games allow these guys to um, showcase their talent. And then people get film. And when they get the film, they're able to look at it. And there's some late guys that come in and say, hey, uh, what about this guy? What about that guy? How are his grades? And the next thing you know, guys are getting an opportunity to go to school. Just paving the way, you know, I think um, stuff like this brings me back, you know, to when I was in high school playing and, um, you know, everything I went through, you know, and, and the reason why I love the game is just the camaraderie and especially to see our people out here, you know, working hard and representing, you know, all these big kids. You know, the sport is built for us, you know, it's, it's, it's our way to get out of, you know, our family's struggles, you know, and it, it's a way to get a good education and, and to see these kids out here grinding and, and going through, you know, all the stuff they're putting their bodies through, it's good to see, you know. And so hopefully they can continue on and go to college and, um, you know, make a name for themselves and their family. I'm one that believes in giving back to the kids, and I, I, I especially, um, especially this foundation right here, Ainga Foundation. I'm so grateful for them and uh, all the sacrifices that have been done in order to put this together. Uh, George Malaulu and his crew, uh, the people of Oceanside, they did a great, excellent job. We was well taken care of. I was very impressed, and I'm so, I, I, I'm grateful and can't. I look forward to coming back again next year. I'm Olivia Hifo, I go to Heritage High School in Southern California and I play right receiver in Glen Corner. Well, the experience was good. Is the game and everything was fun, but everything leading up to the game was a much better experience. And playing with all these guys from all around the nation and all the guys from Samoa and stuff is a good experience. So meeting everybody else was fun. Yeah, I'll be enrolling at BYU next fall to play slot receiver. So that'll be fun for me. I play. My name is TJ Fialoa, and I'm from Long, Oklahoma, and I play offensive line. So. Um 
how important was this experience to you as far as the IML Foundation, the party board? Uh, it meant really a lot to me, you know, as a, as a culture thing, and uh, it meant really a lot just being around a bunch of people that's the uh, same race as me or similar. And what's great, it was just fun hanging out with them, and uh, it was a pleasure being a part of this. What are your plans for the future after uh, you graduate from high school? Uh, I plan on playing college football, but I'm, I haven't really decided where to go yet, so I'm going to leave it up to God. see the camaraderie within the boys and they're just having fun. Uh, every year it gets different with uh, each year and it's, it's been a lot of fun being a part of this. This, this is great. So uh, let's Ladies and gentlemen, game. please we encourage other people you know, to send their children please please. Yeah, definitely, definitely. If your son has the opportunity to come to this game, definitely make make that track and come out and just experience this. It's something different, it's something people don't know about and they should. So just come out and have a lot of fun. Well, you know, uh, I just want to say, you know, you first and foremost, you got to take care of your, your academics in your classroom. That's the most important thing you got to do. And another thing you got to do is you got to obey your parents, listen to your parents, because whatever your parents say is, is, is what you need to do and what you need to follow. You know, because uh, as we know, we are God-fearing people. That's the greatest commandment. You know, follow your parents, obey and honor your, your, your father and your mother, and you do good. You do well. Uh, but the other thing is you need to work hard while everybody else is sleeping. And don't ever give up. Thank you. All right. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, how has that changed? Oh, well, I tell you what, I played against George in college. So I went to SC and George went to Arizona. So George was a monster, and he played quarterback. Period, point blank, in the story. Junior could have did whatever he felt like doing. For us at SC, we'd go to practice, and this is no 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 joke. After practice, after he got through rushing the passer, he would cover the wide receivers for little bets and and, and stuff. So he'd pick Rodney Pete off after practice, cover an Eric Alfalter, cover a John Jackson. And you're talking about Pac-10 record holders that he was covering, and mind you, he should be like rushing the passer, right? So he's back and and, and dropping back. Um, Quick story for the bug, we were playing Cal Berkeley and we had a coverage where he'd walk out and cover and jam number one and then blitz off the edge. Well, there was a 20 yard pass down the field on a post and so I'm over the top of it and here comes Junior underneath to pick the ball off about 20 yards down the field. So it's not about uh, poly, just the big burly guys that are just linemen. They can play running back, obviously the Hefo brothers, the Hefo boys are tearing up and been doing it out in our area, out in the Temecula Menifee area. They've been heritage, been a long line of Hefo brothers that have been tearing it up at running back. Um, and then obviously Taylor for us plays tight end, outside linebacker and a little rush in. Very athletic, very good feet. Um, very explosive, and, and I don't want to sound uh, condescending. So it's not like, oh, the Polynesian guy is some special deal. It's just nobody knows about the Polynesian athlete. And so when there's an opportunity for them to showcase their talent, they need to do that because they're, they're, they're dynamic athletes. And, and once again, it's not racist. I'm not, I don't even want to sound like that, you know? Oh, the Polynesian kid, no. Very good football players, and it's not been tapped into. So this is awesome for the kids to come out and play their ball. And I know this, that um, culturally, you're going to get a solid young man. You know, you're going to get a, a, a very, very solid young man who understands commitment, who understands hard work, who understands family, and the value system is high. And in this day and age, there's a lot of kids that are missing, right? You see it on ESPN all the time. On that ticker tape on the bottom, um, kids getting sent home for doing things that have no character. So as a recruiter, I'm going to lean heavily towards a kid, you know, a Polynesian background, um, because I know that at home, that line's being towed, right? And so it keeps my job safe. Hey, uh, congratulations on another successful year. Uh, can you kind of explain today uh, how today's event has been so far as from, you know, 
uh, preparation stage to where it's at right now, about to conclude? You know what? Uh, with six minutes left in the game, the last eight months has been special. I mean, uh, preparation from Timo, from Team Ainga, from the city of Oceanside, the uh, district, uh, Oceanside School District, everybody's hands in the in the whole planning really kind of made this thing a smooth process uh, from the food, from getting these guys to and from, and just the preparation from taking care of the kids for the last four days. You know, uh, the game is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, how I saw, you know, a number of uh, guys with USC here, different athletes who have been through your program with this game. Uh, how do you feel when you see these kids so, so successful and, and moving up in this? You know, I feel good about it, but you know, it's just them coming back home. They feel home. They feel at home when they're amongst their their people, and they know it's a, it's gonna they're gonna see all their aunts, their cousins, and it's just a family festive uh, environment where. I mean, you feel stronger every time you're around your people. And when they go back to SC and they're able to kind of share our culture with everybody else, it just shows exactly how special they are. You know, um, every year it's a new bunch of kids. Do you see a difference in the, in the, in the quality of players from, you know, now to, to now? Well, you know, if you look at it, if you look at these, these players now, I mean, the first year we had a good quality of team, but as it went along, you see... At least this year, I mean, the magnitude of how faster, how much faster, how much stronger, how bigger. I mean, all of the different facets, how football has uh, evolved today is, is all compacted into that field right now. So we have you have reached out to all the different, not just the Samoan communities, but the other Polynesians are now becoming stronger and are more involved. How is that working out? You know, just making sure that you have a representation of all the different ethnicities is very important in our efforts in the community. If we all know that we're all from the same area, we're all gonna, we all got to get along, and we all got to make sure that, hey, that's my brother on the other side. We're all from the same small area. Although we're in little, you know, tiny uh, dots on the map, we all have a common goal of we all are family-oriented, we're all God-fearing, and we are loyal to what we do. I don't know, but it sure is a lot of people. So it's probably our, our best uh, showing to date, but uh, I want to thank all the hands that really help support. Uh, team Motion Side, you guys are a blessing. Um, team Maenga, hey, been here 18 years, going on 19. Let's keep it up. All those that want to get involved, please do so. We're a work in progress, and we just want to make sure that we get stronger, but we don't get stronger if you, you can't come along. So God bless you all. Thank you very much. All right. Didi Vatano, Sivanua Iloilo Thomas from Missouri. And we have... Taylor to us a simple right here who's going to lead them in the Siva Tow. Let's give them a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Who else is this? Our house. Who else is this? Aiga Foundation. Now we're going to go up. So we're going to go to our door. Why the door? Me. Why the door? Me.
I just want to thank God for an awesome event and just working with the players has been a blessing. Teaching them the Siva Tau and working with the students of the Oceanside School District has been a blessing. And I just, it's, this is a great event. It's about unity and family and Ainga, and that's what it's all about. And so I just give God all the glory and I just want to say thank you. Just thank God for everything. And I'm just glad it's over with because we can go and uh, take a nap now.